let's talk about something that I see all the time. Uh, what DLC is best? Is this DLC worth it? What comes in this DLC? Um, I see that question constantly. And I don't really blame folks for that. Because if you look at what is out there. Between all of the species that are available to hunt, all the weapons that are available to hunt, all the equipment that's available, you just don't know what's worth it, and you don't want to make the wrong purchase. So I'm going to try to make a video today kind of giving an overview of everything that is currently available up into Mississippi Acres, which comes out here in just a few days, and... Hopefully I can give you guys some help as to deciding what you think you should spend your hard money on. Um, yeah, I've got it broken down into three categories. We have weapon packs, we have maps or reserves, and we have equipment. Um, it's going to, I varied slightly different from what Expansive Worlds has put out. Um, because they consider like the the goose pack to be a weapon pack. Yes, you do get a weapon in there, but you buy that so you can have the equipment to hunt geese. It's not so you get a new shotgun. Um, so it's gonna be a little different. Um, I'm gonna try to make this video not 45 minutes long. Uh, we'll see. And this intro is already longer than I thought it was gonna be. So um, yeah, without further ado. Let's get started with weapon packs. All right, so weapon pack number one is the 22 long rifle. It's a semi-automatic. You'll get a crossbow with a scope as well as a recurve bow. Now, there is another DLC for a map that gives you the opportunity to get the long bow if bow is your weapon of choice. But let's talk about the 22 long rifle for a second. It can hunt all of your small species. And it's great for plucking out rabbits, ducks. You can use it for turkeys. You can use it on geese, even. Um, it really is a shining star of this weapon pack, I would say. All right, it's so weapon pack two. This comes with the Grelic Drilling Gun, which you also get an optic for. You get the Mosin as your bolt action rifle, and you're also going to get a pistol, which kind of has a fun twist to it in weapon pack two. Um, some important things to know about this pack. So one cool thing that to note about the drilling gun is that you can actually hunt everything um, in the game with this one single weapon um, from level one to level nine. It has different um, shotgun shells you can use, um, like bird shots and slugs up to a large caliber rifle. And you can do all of that with this one gun. Um, the Mosin is also a pack too. It's a pretty solid rifle. However, it's kind of overshadowed by weapons like the 30-06 or the M1. So last but not least is the 45 um, Colt Revolver. Now, this one's pretty cool. You can shoot your um, middle-range leveled animals with this pistol as a pistol, but it also allows you to shoot a shotgun shell out of it, um, being the 410, um, which is pretty nice for shooting... Um, birds and rabbits things like that that are a little bit smaller all right so over on to weapon pack three there is an air rifle that you get in this one you also get the 30-06 and you get the 22 semi-automatic pistol um kind of a fun pack the 45 air rifle is going to allow you to um, shoot some of those small animals as well as some mid-range stuff um, with making less noise the 30-06 is my workhorse that's the one that i like the most um, it is overshadowed by the M1. They shoot the same caliber, but the M1 is semi-automatic. Um, the 22 long rifle pistol, that one's just kind of a fun pistol to have. Um, it's a nice pistol to help you build your pistol score up so you can unlock better attachments and weapons. Um, and if you shoot this thing as fast as you can click, it's just a hoot. So, and yes, I did just say hoot. Um, fun pack. It's not a big workhorse pack because that 30 out of 6 does get overshadowed by that M1, which we're going to get into right now in the Smoking Barrels weapon pack. Last but definitely not least out of the weapon packs is the Smoking Barrels weapon pack. This was the fourth weapon pack to come out and the most recent. Um, 
probably the most popular. You get the muzzle loaders. Big fan of of them. They're a lot of fun to shoot. Um, you also get the M1, which is a, which shoots a 30 out six caliber um, round, and it is the current workhorse of the game. Most people that are grinding for a great one, um, whether it is Red Deer or Whitetail, it's just the most efficient um, weapon really out there. You also get the Miller Model 1891 shotgun, which is a 10 gauge shotgun. Um, you can shoot birds with it. You can shoot deer with it. You can shoot bison with it. It is probably my favorite shotgun of the game. If you were going to pick one weapon pack to buy, this is probably the one I would suggest. The muzzleloader is just fun. The animations are cool. The guns look cool. Um, that shotgun does everything you need to do. It's a fun, it's got a fun animation. It's got fun sounds. It's just unique. And then the M1 is the workhorse. It's going to be able to like take down multiple deer in a single herd, help you with your... Um, you're grinding as well as it's just it's got a fun sound you get the ping when you run out of the ammo it's a solid weapon pack um if you if i have an option for a second weapon pack to purchase my suggestion would be weapon pack number one and that's mainly because of that 22 long rifle and the versatility that it gives you to hunt those smaller game animals Alrighty, so out of weapons and into maps, also known as reserves, the first important thing to know about reserves is that you don't have to buy any of these to actually play them. You can go into multiplayer, you can hop into a server that has a map that you do not own, and you can still play on that map. Now, if everybody leaves that map that has that DLC, you have about 10 minutes, and then the server will close down. Um, however, if a buddy of yours has the map and you want to play with him, you guys can play for as long as you want together on a map, even though you don't own it. We're going to start off with Medved. Now, Medved was the first new map of reserve that um, was put out for Call of the Wild uh, as a DLC. And in my opinion, it kind of shows. Um, in Medved, you're going to have the opportunity to hunt the following. Wild boar, moose, and reindeer, also known as caribou, depending on where you're at. Um, and then a few map specific animals these animals you can only find on this reserve and that is brown bear that is the eurasian lynx and that is the musk deer now in my opinion out of all of the dlc maps this is probably my least favorite um, i find myself more often than nothing sitting alone in the cold wilderness man it's cold not hearing anything not seeing anything hello any animals out there? The musty are pretty cool. The lynx is what it is. Bears, there's lots of bears out there you can hunt. And you can hunt boar, the moose, and the reindeer slash caribou on other maps. Just my opinion. Take it for what it is. Alrighty, and sliding on into the savannah for map number two. Brahanga Savannah. This is definitely one of my favorite maps that's out there. Um you have a total of nine species that you can hunt on this map and every single one is unique you cannot find these animals anywhere else in the game the nine unique species you have the opportunity to hunt are the scrub hare side striped jackal cape buffalo warthog lesser kudu springbuck the blue wildebeest gemsbuck and the and the king of the savannah the lion which has a fur variant, which is one of the most coveted animals in the game, the albino lion. This map kind of has it all. It's got wide open planes for you to make longer shots. It's got some cover for make closer shots. It's got interesting animations with the springbuck. Wildebeest, they do stampedes. Um, plus you have the predator of the savannah, the lion. Definitely put Verhunga Savannah on the top of your DLCs to purchase when you're ready to purchase maps. It's a good one. And one last thing I will say about the Savannah is by purchasing this DLC, you also gain access to the 470 Nitro Express, which is the largest caliber available in the game for a rifle. Alrighty, and on to the next map we're gonna talk about is Parque Fernando. Now, Parque Fernando has seven animals in total, four which are unique. Um, let's start off with a red deer, puma, and a mule deer as animals that you can hunt on other reserves as well, with the unique animals being black buck, cinnamon teal, 
Axis Deer, and Water Buffalo. Parquet is a fun map. It has Red Deer and Mule Deer on the same map, which I enjoy. I like both of those species to hunt a lot. Water Buffalo can be a lot of fun. They get aggressive and they'll actually attack you. And Cinnamon Teal are one of the coolest looking animals in the game, I feel. Um, just a very cool skin. The devs did a very good job with it. Um, it's a fun map overall. It's got an interesting species list. Um, kind of a middle of the pack The for me anyways. The landscape is pretty, but I think there's other ones that are better. Not a bad map, but I think I would still pick the Savannah over Parquet. And one final note for Parquet is that by purchasing this map, you do have an archery range or a target range on this map that you can go to and you can shoot and practice your aim uh, without using your actual ammunition. So kind of a plus there if you want to get used to different weapons or the bow. Onto the fourth map we're going to talk about is Yukon Valley. Now Yukon Valley is going to give you seven animals in total, four of them being unique. The animals you can hunt are moose, plains bison, and caribou or reindeer, however you want to call them. The four animals that are unique are the Harlequin Duck, the Red Fox, the Gray Wolf, and the Grizzly Bear. Now, Yukon Valley is an interesting map for me. I love this map. Um, it's my favorite map to hunt moose on. Um, hunting caribou or reindeer is really fun. The Plains Bison, you can also find those on Silver Ridge Peaks or SRP. It really is an enjoyment to hunt. Um, it's hard for me to be critical about how they've laid this map out and how it looks especially when it snows when it snows on this map it's honestly just breathtaking for a video game it's pretty crazy um so if this is a species list that interests you i would definitely put it at the top of the list for a potential purchase for you and one last thing for yukon is that i'm purchasing this dlc you gain access to the 300 Magnum. Um, it's a solid rifle for that middle to higher ranged animals. And it's just kind of a fun gun to have in your locker. Alrighty, the next map we're gonna take a look at is Quattro Colinas. Now, Quattro Colinas is going to give you 10 animals in total to hunt, so lots of options. Six of them being unique. So the four animals that are Available to hunt on Quattro and other maps include the wild boar, roe deer, red deer, and European hare. The six unique species to Quattro include four ibex species, the gray dose, the site, southeastern Spanish, and the ronda ibex. The last two unique species include the Iberian wolf and the Iberian mouflon. Now, Quattro Colinas is probably my favorite map to hunt Red Deer on. Quattro also offers uh, a lot of terrain where you can see a good amount of distance. Um, this is going to allow you to make some of those longer shots as well as um, spot some of your potential targets further downrange and then make your stock in. The four Ibex species are interesting because they all look slightly the same but all slightly different as well as there is a multi-mount for the Ibex, which is pretty cool um, if you get yourself an all a diamond one. Just something kind of special. Also, by purchasing Quattro Kalinas, you do unlock uh, Martinson 6.5 millimeter bolt action rifle. This rifle allows you to have, you know, a little more variation in what you're using in the game. And some people really like the 6.5. Overall, if you enjoyed the species list and the idea of searching for all four diamond ibex to make your multi-mount this is a fun map it's got a good species list and you can grind for the great one red deer on this map our next stop brings us back to north america for silver ridge peaks or srp now srp is going to give you a nine total animals to hunt three of which are unique of those nine the six you can find in other Maps include the Puma, or mountain lion in this case, the Mule Deer, the Plains Bison, Black Bear, Merriam's Turkey, Bighorn Sheep. Um, the three animals you can find only on Silver Ridge Peak include the Pronghorn, Rocky Mountain Elk, and Mountain Goat. 
Despite having many animals you can find on other maps, Silver Ridge Peaks is one of my favorites. It's laid out really nicely. It's got some really nice open terrain. Um, it has mule deer and elk. This map also brought us turkeys for the first time, which the models of the turkeys are really, really good. And to go along with that, the models for the pronghorn or antelope were also done really well. I'm a big fan of the pronghorn and the turkey. If you enjoy the idea of hunting out west for Rocky Mountain elk and pronghorn, this is a great map. You have all the species down from turkey all the way up to plains bison that you can go hunting for. Now, Silver Ridge Peaks is the map I was referring to earlier where you'd have the ability to get the longbow. So if you prefer a more traditional bow, you could purchase Silver Ridge Peaks instead of purchasing the weapons pack for the recurve. And then you would also gain access to the pronghorn, Rocky Mountain Elk, and Mountain Goat, which you normally wouldn't, the map itself, obviously, and you get the longbow. Headed on over to the home of our favorite Kiwi, New Zealand, Tay. We're just going to leave it at Tay because I butchered every time. Now, this map provides us with eight animals we can hunt, four unique to this reserve. The ones you can find in other reserves include red deer. Merriam's turkey, fallow deer, and European rabbit. The four unique species only found on Tay are feral pig, sika deer, chamois, and feral goat. Tay provides a very wide range of environments to hunt in, from higher mountains down to rivers. To this is one of the more popular maps to hunt red deer on at the moment um, during their nighttime drink because it seems to hold a lot of stag red deer. Another positive to you, Tay, is you can hunt fallow deer here instead of on Hirsch. A lot of people don't like Hirsch, so this provides you another outlet for that. And Sika deer are just a pretty cool animal, in my opinion, to hunt. With the purchase of this reserve, you also get the 303. Uh, 303 provides a decent range of middle class animals that you can hunt and it provides a, a nice action and sound. Um, it definitely hasn't replaced either the 30 out 6 or the M1 in my opinion, although they do have some overlapping species. If you like to hunt the 303 or you like the idea of having a, a range between rabbits and turkeys to deer and goats to hunt, Tay may just be the DLC map for you. Alrighty, so on to our last map or reserve before we get a little tidbit about Mississippi Acres, and that is Rancho del Arroyo. So Rancho uh, provides a pretty sweet mix of um, animals that we can hunt. There's a total of nine animals, five of which are unique to Rancho. The four that are repeats are Whitetail, Bighorn sheep, mule deer, and coyotes, with the five that you can only find on Rancho being the Rio Grande turkey, Mexican bobcat, collared peccary, ringneck pheasant, and the antelope jackrabbit. Now, in case you're wondering, there is actually a difference between the Rio Grande turkey and the Merriams that you find on maps like SRP. The difference is very subtle, but they did change the model, which I do appreciate. Rancho provides a really nice lower to middle range of animals that you can hunt from antelope and the pheasants up into your deer species. It's the only map that has both whitetail and mule deer on at the same time. So if you're really like hunting deer, you might really like this map. The pheasants are really interesting. This is the first map that they were added to. Um, you actually have to flush the pheasants up into the air to shoot them. Otherwise, your score does not count. I've come across some issues with this where they don't like to actually flush and you're just chasing them. Um, hopefully a rework comes out with that and we'll see where things go. But the models themselves look fantastic for the pheasants. And honestly, the Mexican Bobcat has um, a fur variant, uh, which is blued. And it's just it looks really, really good. They did a really good job with Rancho. Now, for purchasing Rancho, you do get a new shotgun. The uh, Kosu, Kosu model 1897. Um, it comes in a few different skins and it's a decent little pump action shotgun. 16 gauge. 
it's fun. Nothing too crazy about it, but it is a little added bonus. Um, so you could run out there and take a shot at a couple of pheasants with your new shotgun. And finally on to Mississippi Acres. So Mississippi Acres comes out here in a few days, December 7th, 2021. And I'm pretty excited. It's got a very uh, interesting lineup of animals. There's going to be nine species that we can hunt on um, when it's released, six of which are unique. The three repeats are whitetail, black bear, and then this map now has feral pig, which means that Tay is not the only map to have feral pig. Um, the six species that are unique to Mississippi are the gray fox, the bob white quail, raccoons, American alligator, which I know a ton of people are really excited about. We're also getting a new turkey, the eastern turkey, and a new rabbit, the cottontail rabbit. It's a sweet species lineup. We also get a new weapon, which is the 22 Hornet, which is going to shoot species between one and two. So you really use that on your rabbits and your turkeys and then your raccoons as well. This map is exciting because it not only gives us a new map to hunt the whitetail on to try and get a great one, but we also get raccoons, which are an interesting animal. We also get the alligator, which watching um, Jaxi try to shoot and kill them. They seem to be a very tough animal to actually get shots on. So I'm really excited to get the bow in my hands, shooting some gators and seeing if we can get some heart shots. The quail should flush, hopefully a little better than the pheasants, but that same mechanic, which is exciting. And overall, it's a fun species list. If you guys are wondering which map to purchase first, my suggestion is to go with Mississippi Acres. Now, hear me out. First thing you need to expect is there's probably going to be bugs, so you're going to have to be patient and work through the bugs. It's not uncommon when new maps release. There are bugs that get associated with the map. Why am I saying that you should get Mississippi Acres if I'm already expecting there to be bugs? If it's anywhere near the release date, there's so much hype into the new map and the new species that you can really bond with the community in discord and in streams you definitely should look into getting mississippi acres now besides mississippi acres if you were to take that one off of the table and say which three of the currently released or older maps would i suggest um personally the three that i would go with would probably be Brahunga savannah you get a very unique species list you're only able to hunt these animals on this map lesser kudu are getting truac update here with the release of the new map yukon valley it's a beautiful map it's a, a fun map to grind for moose and caribou on um, as well as you get animals like the grizzly bear which i think is pretty cool and I would go with Silver Ridge Peaks. Silver Ridge Peaks is like hunting in my backyard. I love the map. I love the pronghorn. I love the fact that you get turkeys and you get Rocky Mountain elk. So those three maps, Rahunga, Yukon, Silver Ridge Peaks, those are probably the top three maps that I suggest, um, along with Mississippi Acres for sure. Now that's not to say that these maps aren't worthwhile. Take a look at the species list that I've described before you guys and see which you think you're going to enjoy hunting the most that's what's important because again just because you don't have savannah you can hop into a multiplayer map that does have savannah and you can still hunt lions or kudu whatever you want all righty now let's chit chat about equipment dlcs um, we're gonna go through these a little bit quicker just because they're a little bit easier to discuss and i think there's a clearer line as to what is more important than not um first off we're gonna have Tents and ETVs, um, they're often kind of bundled together. People think you have to have both of them. Here's my lowdown on tents. Tents, you can have 16 on a reserver map. Um, they're great to help you get to your favorite hunting spots faster. I definitely recommend tents, um, especially when you're grinding, you're going to want tents. Um, you hop into your map, you don't want to have to run or drive your ATV and scare all the animals. You just want to be able to go to your tent set up and start hunting atvs on the flip side they are fantastic for exploring the map so besides that initial exploring of the map to get the outposts or lodges and setting up your tents 
once things are set up, I don't even touch my ATV really. Um, so in my opinion, tents are definitely one that you want to pick up earlier than later. They they do make life a lot easier. Next up for equipment is the goose DLC and the duck DLC. You need these if you want to hunt duck or geese. Simple as that. If hunting those ducks and geese are your thing, that's what you're excited about, get them. They give you the decoys, the collars, and all the um, blinds and everything you need to get yourself into some good quality hunting for ducks and geese. If hunting those species are really not of interest to you, you can hang on to it for a while and maybe get them down the, down the road. I will tell you that um, ducks are getting a rework and hunting geese is a great way to get money when you're first starting out. So rolling right on into trophy lodges, there are two lodges available in Call of the Wild, the Spring Creek Manor Lodge and the Sasika Safari Trophy Lodge. My suggestion, if you take a look at some videos online, you can kind of get a feel for each lodge and how it's laid out and what it looks like. Pick the one you like and get one. Um, as you get further in the game, if you want to get the other one, fantastic. But I do suggest at least buying one initially. It's a really fun place to throw your trophies up, get your diamonds in there, get your rares in there, get some cool multi mounts. You're able to show your buddies your lodge. Um, it's a really great aspect of the game that's not just hunting related. Definitely go pick up one, choose the one you like. Alrighty, and then the last three equipment DLCs we're going to talk about are the tree stand and tripod pack, the high tech hunting pack and the bloodhounds. Now the tree stand and tripod pack, you don't need it to play the game. However, if you're a hunter that likes to be up in a tree stand using your, your bow and arrow to hunt down some white tail and call on your animals, it's a good pack for you. The high tech hunting pack gives you some night vision binoculars as well as a night vision scope. Me personally, I like the high tech hunting pack because of the lighted knocks for the arrows. I use a bow a lot and it's fun to be able to use those lighted knocks. The bloodhound pack, if you want a companion to go hunting with you, there you go. The bloodhounds are great for tracking. If you shoot an animal and you're not 100% sure which direction it went, instead of having to follow the blood trail yourself, you can get close, tell your dog to track, and it will help guide you to your downed animal. It's great for content creators, people that stream, because you can walk into the area where you shot the animal, say track it, and then while you're talking to chat or working on something else, your dog is helping you find and retrieve your downed animal. So there you go. That's all of the equipment DLCs that you can currently purchase. Again, my suggestion, grab the tents and ground blinds, grab one of the trophy lodges, and then if hunting geese and duck is your thing, grab those DLCs. The other ones can wait if you don't have the money to do it right away. They're, you're not missing anything absolutely incredible out of the game. Um, but the tents and the trophy lodge does make the game better overall. All right, so there you go. I, I know it was a long one. Thanks for sticking through it. It was a lot of information to cover. Um, but yeah, again, I guess if, if EW were to make a Brandon's Best Buys um, of DLC currently, um, you'd be spending about 20 bucks maybe 25 dollars if you include the new map and that's going to get you a weapon pack number one for the 22 long rifle the smoking barrels pack for the m1 and the muzzle loaders you're also going to get uh three maps you'd get or four if you get the new one um savannah yukon silver ridge peaks and mississippi the new one um and then you're also going to get yourself some tents and a trophy lodge to go along with that so all of that would be about 25 bucks. And that's mainly because the new map is going to be about seven, eight dollars when it comes out. If you were to get rid of the new map and just buy uh, the suggestions I've made, less than $20. You're going to get yourself two weapons packs, three map. <laughs> You're going to get yourself two weapon packs, three maps, and ATVs plus a trophy lodge. There's a lot out there that this game offers. My suggestion, jump in. Purchase the DLCs that you A can afford and B that you're most excited about. Play them. Test out other maps in multiplayer servers before you buy those ones and make sure you like them. Um, you know, hop into the Discord, check out other streams. Um, both TK 
um, True Kiwi and Jaxi both stream as well as their community uh, managers with EW. Great people to hop into their streams and just see how they enjoy the game. They're likable dudes. Help you out wherever they can. Um, hop in their discords. Hop in EW's main discord. I'll put links to all three of those down below in the description. Um, as well as my discords down in the description as well. But thanks again, you guys. Hopefully this helped you out a little bit. If it did, I would love it if you would like or subscribe or leave a comment. Let me know if you disagree or agree with my suggestions for these DLCs. I just realized I talked a lot with my hands. So there you go, you guys. Get out there. Enjoy life. Go hunting. Hop into a Discord. Be a part of the community. It is growing. Just found out today that um, we've added over 10. We have over 10 million active um, hunters now in the game which is absolutely fantastic there's a lot of folks out there to go on hunts with and share your stories so yeah i'm gonna wrap it up there everybody thanks again get out there go hunting enjoy life take care